Hello, Wazra here back with another video and today we have a mage gearing guide. A lot of you have been asking for this after I made both ranged and melee a couple months ago, but I wanted to wait for God Wars Dungeon 3 as I felt like it was going to shake up the mage meta. And boy was that a good decision. Kirapak has revolutionized the gearing order for mage and has made it the best low cost style by far. As with all these gearing guides, they are a rough order and not a bible that you should follow. If you're doing a piece of content that requires something later in the list, then go for it. Or if you want to start gearing for another style, go for it. You don't have to start at 1 and end at 33 here. Starting off, we are going with a relatively low level setup. There are a variety of magic weapons that you can use around the T78 to 82 tier. There really is like seven or eight of them. And I chose the most viable and easiest one to get, the Staff of Limitless Air. It's a T82 weapon and it provides unlimited accuracy. You craft it by taking an Elemental Impetus, Mystic Air Staff, and an Air Talisman and combining it together. And the total cost is about 7 mil, which is great for a T82 weapon. The only downside is that once you make it, you can't sell it, so that 7 mil is lost forever but you can make it into a niche switch weapon like Karoming at a later stage if needed. Armor wise, I'm gonna keep it simple and we're starting with subjugation for the main five armor slots. Necklace wise, either a Ceridoman's Hist or if you have some extra tokens lying around, it's upgraded version an Arcane Stream Necklace as it takes 100k dunge tokens to make. Ring wise, we can just camp a Ring of Vigor for now as the other rings aren't that great. And last, but certainly not least, we have one switch weapon, which is the Gothic Staff. Its special attack is very good and will help you kill things quickly, even when it's not stored in an essence of finality. Before we get into any costly upgrades, let's talk about the free upgrades. There are three right away that we want. First is the Dragon Rider Amulet. It's a reward from the quest one of a kind. It provides plus 30.2 style bonus in magic and plus 10 prayer points. This is 13.9 less style bonus than the arcane stream necklace from above, but its passive makes up for that. It has two of them. First, it boosts the damage of Dragon's Breath by 10%, a flat increase. Then, it has a 10% chance to apply a bleed to the target, dealing 10% of Dragon's Breath max hit three times. So essentially, 3% more damage from its max hit. Seeing as Dragon's Breath is one of the best mage basics, it's something that you're going to want to camp until you get to later amulets with better passives. Second is the Sunshine ability. This is an ultimate ability that increases damage dealt by magic attacks by 50% for 30 seconds. This duration can be extended to 37 seconds with the Planted Feet perk, but more on that later. This ability is a pillar of mage DPS rotations, and before going any further, the World's Wakes quest should be completed to unlock this ability. And the last is the Asylum Surgeon's Ring, which is a powerful ring. It gives plus 21 style bonus to magic, and has a passive effect where there is a 10% chance to prevent adrenaline loss when using threshold abilities. Additionally, there is a 40% chance to save 25% adrenaline when using special attacks, a net save of 10% on average. This will be your main camp ring until you start to need to use Ring of Death for death costs, and the Ring of Vigor is now a swap that you only use on ultimate abilities like Sunshine. Right away we are upgrading Boots and Gloves. Both of these Boots and Gloves are really cheap due to the way that they are dropped, and they have very long term potential to stay in your gear setup. In fact, the Blast Diffusion Boots are so good that they are the boot we use all the way until the very last step of this guide. Blast Diffusion Boots give you the ability to charge Detonate in half the time. This makes it viable in DPS rotations again. It only takes 4 ticks to charge up to 100% or 3 ticks to charge up to 80%, meaning you're not sticking around waiting for it to charge. Additionally, because it's not an offensive ability, you can weave an auto into it and get a free auto attack. With these boots equipped, it's your third best threshold after Asphyxiate and Wild Magic. Carapec Wrist Wraps are one of the new drops from God Wars Dungeon 3, and they are about 7 mil GP at this moment. That makes them very powerful, as they are the best in slot glove whenever the target is not poisonable, and will be the gloves that you use until you have Cinder Banes, and then you'll use Cinder Banes on poisonable targets as well. They have a style bonus of plus 13, and the special effect where you, for 6 seconds after using Dragon's Breath, Damage dealt from Combust happens instantly and is increased by 25%. Very good combo getting these two abilities together and allows you to use Bleeds in Group PVM without worry of it being overridden. You can sell your Subjugation Boots and Gloves as you won't need them anymore. I do want to talk about skilling here because of how important your levels actually are for your DPS and at this point you're best off dumping your excess GP into skills. We're starting with Prayer, which costs about 39 mil to go to level 95 with Dragon's Bones. This unlocks two prayers. At level 92, you get Soul Split, which 
heals you for a percentage of damage dealt. Then at level 95, you get Torment, which increases magic damage and accuracy by 10%, while also improving defense by 10%. Getting both of these prayers is imperative and stopping at 92 prayer when unlocking soul split is a bit of a noob trap as in order to effectively heal from soul split you also need to be able to deal damage and with T95 prayer you can get that damage. The other relevant skill to train is Herblore. To unlock all the relevant untradeable potions you need to get to 99 Herblore. This gets you to within pulse core range of elder overloads which you can make at 107 Herblore. And they are the best overload in the game. Now there is also the Adrenaline Renewals which require 117 Herblore to make and 119 Herblore to have the best recipe. But despite being untradeable, this is assistable so find a friend or clanny that is willing to help you out and make as many of those puppies as you can. Eventually you'll have enough GP to get 117 or 119 yourself without it detracting from your gearing. We've got our first ability purchase and it's Corruption Blast. This ability works very well as it deals between 60 to 300% ability damage over 5 hits and it has the ability to chain onto another target that is close by, further increasing your damage dealt. This is a very powerful ability when used right, however at group bosses it starts to falter. As it's a bleed ability, only one Corruption Blast can be active at a time on a target, so if I use Corruption Blast ability and then my partner uses it a couple seconds later, I'm going to lose out on some of the damage and another high damaging dealing basic would have been better. Next up we have a swap to dual wield, and this is because Greater Concentrated Blast might just be the best purchase you'll ever make in RS. For weapons we have a Cyber Wand and a Virtus Book. Cyber Wand was chosen as a T85 weapon, but it has T90 accuracy and T80 damage, meaning against boss level content it's going to do very well as the extra accuracy tiers are much needed. For the offhand, because damage is the only thing that matters, we can just use a Virtus Book, which is slightly cheaper than a Cyber Orb as they are identical when using abilities. Now let's talk about the Pièce de Résistance, Greater Conch. Not only does it fit all three beams into one global cooldown, Previously it took 5 ticks or 3 seconds to go off, but it also increases the damage of the beams. The total damage of Greater Conk is 70-290%. to 290%. For regular Conk you are dealing between 314 to 157 percent damage in the same amount of time. That's almost a twofold increase in damage. On top of that, because 3 beams are hitting the target, your next ability has a 15% increased crit chance instead of 10% with regular Conk with 2 beams. This ability is insanely good and its 50 mil price tag is very undervalued, but a lot of that has to do with how common the drop is in relation to the staff pieces, so there is a large supply to meet this large demand. The biggest woe moment I had was realizing that Greater Conk on average deals more damage than a flanking 4 basic impact. Planted Feet is a great perk for magic as it's only used for one ability, you want to put it on a switch. It's best placed on an Ancient Lantern, the T80 Defender. This is because the T80 Defender is quote unquote free and only takes an untradeable drop from next and 100k tokens. It can also be used as a shield at boss encounters where you don't need a lot of defenses and only need to res or reflect every once in a while. At the same time, the T90 Defender can be saved for situations where you want to use the Defender offensively and has slightly higher stats. Planted Feet extends the duration of Sunshine by 25% at the cost of losing the bleed ability on Sunshine. This is a very good trade-off as it allows you to fit more thresholds and therefore more damage into the rotation. As it's going on and offhand, you don't need to worry about Aftershock stacks, so two Cyber components is enough to get this perk. If you're a camping two-hand mage, it's best to put your planted feet on a Sun Spear, as it's a cheap weapon and you want to match your switches to your main offensive style. It's now the right moment to get entry-level perks on our weapons and armor. You can find individual rates on the wiki for your level, the link to the calculator will be in the description. But in terms of perks, we are going for Precise 6 and Equilibrium 4 on the weapon. And then for the armor, we're going for Biting 3, Crackling 4, Relentless 3, Impatient 4, and Enhanced Devoted 4. These are perks that don't cost a lot or don't take a lot of chances, and you're able to gain a lot from a very small investment in terms of DPS and damage reduction. At this point, we're upgrading our amulet to the Amulet of Souls. This not only has a very high style bonus at plus 46.3, but it also has two very good passives. 
Soul Split has a 50% chance to heal 25 to 50% more. This equates to a 18.75% increase in healing. And protection prayers are increased by 10% from 50% to 60%. This equates to a 20% damage reduction when using protection prayers. This amulet is insane, and you've probably heard me say this so many times, but once you get this amulet, you'll feel yourself survive longer places, either by using Soul Split and healing, or by taking less damage with protection prayers. It's better than any armor in the game. The Dragon Rider amulet can be used as a switch, something where you put it on just for Dragon's Breath, and then you swap back to your Amulet of Souls for all your other abilities, but that's a little tryhard for me. Seismic Wand is our first T90, and we're only getting the main hand, as that's where most of the benefit comes from. And well, the wand is also about half the price of the offhand Seismic Singularity. This now gives you T90 damage and T90 accuracy, increasing your DPS. The Cyber Wand won't be used for anything or any switches, so feel free to sell it to get a little bit of your money back. Now is a big moment, it's time to swap over to the Grade to Dust equipment. This is a big commitment, but once you get used to it, it's really not a big deal. You're going to want to buy a Zuriel's Robe Bottom and Zuriel Robe Top, and then you want to upgrade it from T78 to T88 by using an Ancient Warrior's Equipment Patch on it. At the same time, you want to buy a Anima Core Helm of Saren, which is a T80 Mage Helm that doesn't degrade. The Zuriels will last 100,000 charges in combat, which lasts for approximately 40 hours of combat. It really depends on what type of content you're doing. The total cost to get a new set of Zuriels is about 30 mil, so you're looking at 750k per hour to use the armor. You can either sell the subjugation or you can keep the top and bottoms around for where there are places where it's not worth using Zuriels due to the cost. While you're upgrading armor, you might as well also upgrade the perks. We're getting in a mid-tier setup with Fighting 4, Crackling 4, Relentless 5, Impatient 4 plus Mobile, and Enhanced Devoted 4. At the same time, if you don't have Equilibrium 4, Ruthless 3 on your offhand weapon, now is a good time to sink a couple mil into it, as it's free damage and it doesn't cost too much. At this point, your death cost is probably starting to get to a point where dying sucks and you'd rather limit your death cost with the Ring of Death. When you die with it equipped, it loses 15% of its charge and your death is avoided. The ring is recharged with onyxes and one onyx gives 50% of a repair, which means a death uh, with the Ring of Death is 30% of an Onyx, which at current prices is about 1 million GP. It also has a secondary passive where you gain adrenaline when killing mobs, which makes it very good for Slayer. On top of that, it boosts pretty good stats with plus 25.2 style bonus, and that can be further increased by imbuing it at raids with 15k techie, bringing it up to 27.7 style bonus. Next up is our replacement for one of our first upgrades, the Carepeg Wrist Wraps. Cinderbanes are still better than the Mage Specialized Gloves against monsters that take poison damage. It has two effects related to poison. First, every time that you deal poison damage, there is a 1 in 6 chance that another poison hit will trigger. These extra hits can also chain more hits, making the total increase in hits 20%. It also increases the average damage of poison. It depends on what tier poison you're using, but with weapon poison plus plus plus, this increase is a 38% damage increase. Poison is a very powerful supplement to damage, and the fact that Conk gives three hits in one global cooldown, and you can use it every third ability, makes poison even that much stronger. Still, keep the care pack wrist wraps for monsters where they don't take poison damage and you want to mage. This is mostly old bosses from the 2014 to 2016 era of EOC, such as Virago and Araxor. This upgrade is one that many of you will skip, but it's flanking. Flanking is a perk that affects one ability, so it naturally goes on a switch. In this case, we're using an offhand Cyber Orb as our flanking switch. It removes the stun effect from stun abilities like deep, deep Impact and Impact, but it increases the damage if you are flanking them by attacking from the side or behind. As you need to be from the side or behind, it's really only used in group PVM, but it makes Impact into a very powerful basic, dealing 52 to 260% damage. Deep Impact's damage range is 64 to 320%, which can be used if you have excess adrenaline, but it's a relatively lower priority threshold, as you can just use a Guthic Staff instead. It's time for our first major big save, the Inquisitor's Staff. It's a Hex Hunter weapon, meaning that it's a T80 weapon, but against melee class monsters, it gets two big buffs. 12.5% extra damage and 10% hit chance. 
It depends on the rest of the gear and the monsters you're fighting to determine its exact stats, but you can roughly say that it's about T97 damage and T91 accuracy when the special effect is in play. Mage is also unique in the fact that a lot of the boss monsters default to melee class as they often have a big melee hit. Virago, Nex Angel of Death, Solak, and Telos are all melee class, meaning the passive works there, and it's very good. At this point, I'd like to mention Fortic Auto Attack. It's a way of gaming the system so that you can weave auto attacks into your rotation and get the most out of your abilities. Greater Conk has kind of changed this around as now you want to use Conk every third ability. It's just that good. I would look at resources in PVME or a separate four ticking guide if you're interested, but the main concept is a three ability rotation where you go Greater Conk, then you use another ability with dual wield on, and then you swap to your staff Wait an extra tick with the global cooldown is up, kind of like when you snipe, and then you hit that keybind for your auto attack and your ability at the same time. You then repeat that process. So in a 10 tick window, you get greater conk, dual wield ability, two hand auto, and two hand ability. With both Seismic Wand and Inquisitor, four ticking is very beneficial. Reaper Necklace is a purchase that is kind of made just because you're going to have to eventually use one for an essence of finality, and you might as well get some use out of it. Instead of increasing healing or reducing damage with protection prayers, the Reaper Necklace instead increases your hit chance. This is very big at places like Virago and Rise of the Six where you miss a lot and you don't need the Amulet of Souls to help your sustain. And our very next purchase is the Essence of Finality. I've said it enough times, but this is one of the best items in the game. It stores the special effects of the Amulet of Souls and the Reaper Necklace in it, meaning you get both at the same time. On top of that, it has plus 56 style bonus and increase over the previously best in slot Amulet of Souls. We could stop right here and it would still be an amazing amulet. But the best part about it is that this amulet allows you to store a weapon special attack inside it, meaning that you can use a lower tier special attack and get T90 plus damage with that special attack. There's really only one viable magic weapon and that's the Guthic Staff whose special attack hits between 140 to 300 percent ability damage while also reducing the target's defense level by 5 percent and increasing the affinity by 2. With T90 plus damage it's very easy to hit a 12k with this attack inside Sunshine making it the Adren dump ability for magic. When you have too much Adren and don't know what to do just keep hitting the special attack of Guthic Staff. The other benefit is that you get rid of Switchscape as you can now just camp a G Staff Amulet. It's been a bit since we looked at our offhands and that's because the T90 offhand is so expensive. Partly because of the T90 Defender and the need for switches. The singularity is double the price of the wand. But we're at a point where the 250 mil is worth the extra damage that we are going to get. Each tier of damage provides 4.8 ability damage on an offhand. So the 10 tier increase from Virtus Book is 48 ability damage. Which sounds small but it adds up very quickly. Limitless Ability Codex is mo more important for magic than it is for range, thus making it higher up on the list. You're able to use the Sunshine Ability every 60 seconds, but at the same time you can only drink an Adrenaline Potion every 120 seconds. So for half of your Sunshines you won't have access to a Dren Pot. And when that happens you want to use Limitless to get your thresholds off earlier, meaning you can get 2 Wild Magics and 2 Asphyxiates per Sunshine. Limitless gives you the ability to activate thresholds without 50% Adrenaline for 6 seconds. Its cost is quite high at 350 mil, but it's a permanent unlock that will be useful for the rest of your PVM encounters as it's very hard to power creep this ability out of the meta. The next item is another one of those quasi optional ones. The Channeler's Ring is very powerful as it makes your channeled mage abilities better. For each hit of a channeled ability you gain 4% crit chance on the next hit. So the first hit of Asphyxiate has a 4% crit chance, then the second hit gets 8%, third hit 12% and so on. This is very powerful especially when comboed with other crit boosting modifiers and the Staff of Armadale special attack. Finally, it also has the best mage style bonus of any ring in the game at plus 30.4. The big downside with this ring is that you can't wear Ring of Death with it, so you're likely going to have to deal with high death cost to make the most out of it. If you're comfortable paying your death cost without a Ring of Death on, it's a valid purchase, but if you're just going to camp Ring of Death and you won't get much out of it, there's no point of spending 100 mil plus on a ring. Note if there is a death rework, probably buy this ring earlier instead of the Ring of Death a couple minutes ago. We've largely ignored Aftershock up until now, but it's time to take the plunge and commit. We need a total of three Aftershock birds. 
We need Precise 6, Aftershock 1 on our main hand weapon, Aftershock 4, Equilibrium 2 on both our offhand and our two hand weapon. If you don't want to commit to getting multiple Aftershock 4 Equilibriums 2, as they get very expensive, you can stop once you have Aftershock 4 for both the offhand and the two hand, and then can come back later to get the Equilibrium 2 combo. If you haven't used your Guardian's Gift yet, this might be a good place to use it as it's the most expensive per combo to go for. And now, and with this upgrade, we are now over the max cash mark with 2.36 bill with all the mage gear we have. Kind of a theme of these videos, but the Praetal Codex is relatively late into the list as the benefits it provides is not high in relation to the cost. It improves your DPS prayer from 10% accuracy and 10% damage to 12% accuracy and 12% damage. And it also requires level 99 to use, so if you haven't got your 99 prayer yet, now is the time to do so. It's about a 4% increase to DPS. Next up is our first weapon upgrade in a while. We are swapping in our seismic wand with the wand of the Prazel. It's a T92 main hand mage weapon giving us slightly more accuracy and damage. You can sell the seismic wand as is not needed for any other perks as all the switches are on our offhands. At this point we're also near the end of Geary Mage and it's time to start getting things just for the sake of getting them even though the return on investment is low. And with that in mind we're going right into Greater Chain. It's an incredibly niche ability and it's very easy to skip over this step. Unless you're doing content that needs it then it's the right time to purchase it. What it does is that it uses Chain as normal but any additional targets that were tagged by Chain will take 50% of the damage from your next ability cast. This is very good in AoE situations as you can quickly clear mobs and deal a lot of damage. I used it pretty heavily in Fight Kiln going for my Harak and Pet. Though most bossing encounters don't have situations where you can benefit from this ability. Next Angel of Death and Kirapek are two of the bosses that come to mind when thinking about Greater Chain for high level PVM. It's time to upgrade our armor and we've been using Xerials for about 3 bill worth of upgrades now so you've probably gone through a set or two or three. But once your set runs out, the next time we're going to go right to T92. T90 armor is skipped over as the repair costs are very high in comparison with both T88 and T92, and that has to do with tectonic energies and its supply. Regular tectonic is about four times the cost of Xerials, and they degrade at the same rate. It's just not worth the two tier upgrade. But T92 armor has a different repair system, and it ends up being cheaper than the T90 armor, and you get an extra two tiers of damage and armor. The only downside is that there is a large upfront cost of 350 mil, but once you've paid that, it's smooth sailing. You can either sell the Saren Helm or keep it for activities where you want no degradation. Imperium Core is the T92 offhand weapon and it completes our T92 dual wield set. The gain on this is very marginal as you only get 9.6 ability damage over using a singularity, and accuracy doesn't matter for abilities on offhands. This is an upgrade I wouldn't get unless the other styles are also geared up. At the same time, you can convert your Seismic Singularity into a flanking switch, removing your Cyber Orb. And while you're doing that, and thinking about upgrading Flanking 4 to Flanking 4 Equilibrium 1. This is another really low return on investment upgrade, but it does increase your damage. The total cost of Flanking 4 Equilibrium 1 is about 100 clockwork components on average, so approximately 50 mil. The Staff of Armadil is the newest released T95 weapon, and with the current meta of Inquisitor's Staff working most places and Greater Conk being so good with dual wield, it's unlikely that this weapon does much more than act as a special attack stick. The special was insane, but they nerfed it due to recursive crits, where as long as you had enough targets, you got infinite damage. They have said that the staff spec will be buffed soon, and as I'm recording this, there is no news, but it should be up on the 16th of August. I do see a future where this spec is really good for mage, but its high cost will make it very hard to get anywhere above this point in the gear order. Now we're mostly through our gearing, but we have a couple extremely low return on investment items to get that are permanent upgrades. First off is the Essence of Finality Ornament Kit. It increases the style bonus by plus three, giving about a quarter of a percent of DPS over the regular EOF, and this costs 90 mil, making it an extremely late game item as that 90 mil can be better spent a lot of other places. And then there's an even lower return on investment upgrade, the Shadow Spike, which can be used to upgrade Blast of Fusion Boots to T90, giving it plus two style bonus or approximately 0.16% DPS over the regular boots. This upgrade is more expensive at 141 mil and worse at only plus two style bonus, so it should be done second. 
Well, that's it. That's our mage gearing guide from air staff and subjugation all the way to Prazo's staff of Armadale and elite tectonic. I hope this video helps you make decisions on where to spend your GP and how to gear for mage. I have videos on both ranged and melee as well and we'll leave links to them in the description if you want to check them out. There will also be a list of items in a comment that I didn't talk about either due to their lack of relevance for mage or for being very niche for the type of player that will need this video. If you like the content I'm creating, consider subscribing. Turns out it's free. If you like the video, smash that like button. You have no idea how much it actually helps. But past that, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.